Right, it's time to lay the plywood floor down on top of this now it's all sealed. When I set the battens out, I made sure that this one here was the same width as a, a sheet of 8x4 timber. So this is at 12, 20 millimetres, or roughly four foot to the centre of this batten. So all I really need to do is measure the length to here, to this edge. These two edges should be parallel. This will be square 90 degrees. So the only one that we're going to have to make any cuts into is this profiled step here. So my distance off the furthest part of that step is 12.20 to the centre of this beam. So what I'll do is I'll just cut it to length. It will be 12.20 wide which will go into that deepest portion there and then we'll offer it up and then we'll scribe all of these other little curves and odd pieces onto the board once we've got it in position. So first thing I'm going to do just cut it to length. I just want to cut this board. We've found a straight edge that looks really good that we're going to use. I'll set it on the good side of the board so I'm cutting away from the piece I want to keep. Um, now to set up where the fence needs to be you need to measure from the side of the blade to the edge of the fence and on here it's 28 millimeters so we need to set the fence back 28 millimeters from where we want the cut line to end up. Now the blade on a circular saw spins in a clockwise upwards direction so the teeth are cutting in the up direction it has a tendency to pull the saw down to the workpiece so it makes it safer to use. So if you're going to get any tear out it's going to be on the upside uppermost surface of your wood. So have your good side that you want on show face down and any tear out will appear on the back side on the top side and to minimize that what I've done is just put a bit of masking tape on the board here that will minimize the chip out on the back side as well. The front side should be really clean and then as you see I've got a high tooth count this is a laminate cutting blade so it should also give me a really clean cut. If you had a low tooth cut blade that would be like a rip saw and that would leave you a really rough finish. So you can see this is the surface that we had facing down. You can see how clean that cut is. So that would be your finished face. And then I'll flip it over. And on the back side, you know, the tape saved it. We had a tiny little bit of tear out there, but it's minimal. You know, you can hardly see it. So yeah, and just take it slow and let the saw do the work. Don't be tempted to rip through it too fast. So we've spoke about this before but there's two different types of jigsaw blades. You'll see the teeth on these ones are cutting in the upwards direction or facing upwards and the teeth on this blade are facing downwards. So this blade will cut on the up stroke and this blade will cut on the down stroke. Now most jigsaw blades use blades that cut on the up stroke because like the circular saw that pulls the tool down to the workpiece making it safer to use but your tear out will be on the top side or the face side that you're looking at. So in this instance, I want to cut on the face side. So I'm going to use a downward cutting blade. Any tear out will be on the bottom and it won't be on the face side. But you have to be a bit more careful because downward cutting blades do have a tendency to make the saw jump around. So you just go slowly. I've cut these little profiles out and the board is now pushed in close to this edge but we've still got to do a cut out for this step back here. I've measured this distance here it's 40 millimeters and the same up there so the board's pushed in as far as it'll go there 
but we need to scribe that curve in there. Now I've shown you how to scribe panels into curved spaces before, but I'll show you how to make a scribe again just quickly. So I just found myself an old stick out of the garden, it can be any bit of wood, doesn't matter. Just cut a point on it to start with. Next thing is to measure the deepest part of your scribe. In this case it's 40 millimeters. Measure back from the very tip of your scribe the 40 millimeters. I'm going to use this 10 so there's no confusion and come back for 40 millimeters back from the point and make a little mark. Find a drill bit exactly the same size as a pencil and make a hole where your mark is. And then just push your pencil through until it's just sticking out the other end like that. And that's your scribe. And the distance between that point and the centre of the pencil is your 40 millimetres. So now at the deepest part of the scribe, the pencil is right on the edge of the board. And then as we come forwards, it will gradually draw a curve on that board. Keep this edge of the scribe parallel to this edge of the board. Don't turn it that way or that way because that will make the distance longer. So keep it square to this edge, 90 degrees, and then scribe your line. Keep it point pushed against what you're trying to scribe and your pencil pushed onto the wood. And then as you come around that curve, it will scribe a line. Let's just do that again because I think the pencil came off the board. So we come around that corner. There we go there, see? We've got a perfect replica, copy of that curve there. So we just need to trim that out now, that'll fit in there, lovely. So now we cut to our scribe line with the jigsaw. On these tight curves, to make it easier with the jigsaw getting round there, and to stop it burning. I've just put a couple of relief cuts in there, only just up to the line, not through the line. And then when we come to cut these pieces, they'll just fall away and it will give us a bit more room to get the blade around. So we've cut with a jigsaw these little bits here to match these curves. Now that should just push in perfectly. And there we go, look at that. Absolutely perfect to that curve. Yeah, it's a good job. And it's not difficult to do, it's quite easy. I just put some foil with a mark on there, mark there, to mark where the centre line of the wooden battens is. And then I've just, with a straight edge, transferred that line onto the timber with a pencil. So now I know where to screw, where the battens are located. I've done the horizontal ones here as well. Transferred those lines onto the board, and then now we can put some screws in to hold it down. Okay, it's time to screw the floor down. The plywood is 12 millimeters thick. I've got one of these little countersink pilot drill bits. They're really, really handy. If you haven't got one of those, I suggest getting one because they drill a pilot hole and countersink at the same time. They're really useful. And then I'm using number four, four mil, 30 millimeter screws. So they're in old money, inch and a quarter screws. So it's enough to go through the plywood and then into the uh, wood below. And then I'm spacing them out roughly every 150 millimetres or 6 inches. Now 
Now, of course, you can put a screwdriver bit in your drill and use that, or you can use some hand tools. Entirely up to you. Personally, I'd go for the screwdriver bit in the drill. There we go. This next sheet has got to go in between the wheel arches. So I've just got it laid here. It's square to the van and it's parallel to the other board that we've just fixed down. So now with this long straight edge, I can put this along the side of the wheel arch, make sure it's snug to the wheel arch. And then I can rule a pencil line down here. And obviously some of this is what we've got to cut away. And then all we need to do now is just profile that little curve transfer that onto the board and then that's the piece we've got to remove i'll probably remove a few millimeters more than that just to give us a little bit of breathing room there but that's how i'm going to establish those lines initially and then that should just slide straight down in between the wheel arches all right i'm going to show you how i'm going to template this curve with this bit of cardboard i'll do it in real time so bear with me I've got a bit of cardboard, I'm just going to make sure it's flush on this edge here and take that down just temporarily. I'll get my straight edge, make sure that's snug against the wheel arch and then draw a line here. That line corresponds with the line that I've got on my board so now I just want to cut half of this away and I'll just lose this bit just cut it square for the moment line it back up with the edge of the board it's now running down the side of the wheel arch as you can see and it's touching the wheel arch there my lines in line with this line this is flush this side tape it back down now that edge is is roughly sort of straight until it gets to this little bit of a curve so with this straight edge Move this one out there. Push it up snug against the wheel arch here, and then draw myself a parallel line basically. So it's now following that line there. Okay. Now we can get rid of that piece. Now offer it up again, make sure it's flush on this side again and flush here on the wheel, on the face of the wheel arch, snug there, tape it down again. And now we've only got this little curve to infill here. So with little bits of tape, I'm going to just infill until I've got that curve replicated make sure it's pushed in nice and snug 
Just keep putting little bits of tape around the wheel arch. Like that. That's it. And you don't have to be absolutely perfect because obviously you want a little bit of breathing space. But now, when we have a look at that now, that is exactly following the curve of that wheel arch. That's how to template it. Okay, so now we've got our template. Where do we need to place it? Well, the end of the board that's underneath here, I can see is right there, right where that pencil mark is. So this board needs to shift forwards by this amount. 615 millimeters. It needs to go in this direction. So where this is needs to be 615 millimeters from this edge. It's almost spot on the same place, but not quite. So there. So at this point here, when this board moves 615 millimeters in that direction, this point is now going to be there. So that's the point where we put our template. Again, make sure that's flush there. Make sure these lines line up with our line here. Tape that down and then we can draw that curve in. And there we go. You can see now we've got that line in and that's what we'll cut to. We'll remove all of this and then that'll slide down nicely to that wheel arch. Right, you'll see here two things. I've got a downward cutting blade, so any tear out is going to be on the bottom of the board and not on the face. Just need to be a bit careful with that because it will have a tendency to make the saw jump up if you go too fast. So just take it easy. And then I've also tilted the bottom of the saw over at 15 degrees. And what that'll do is that'll cut a little bit of a back angle into the board so that when we put it up to the wheel arch, the board will be sloping backwards. So if there's a tiny little curve at the bottom of the wheel arch where it meets the floor, that back angle will avoid that and we'll get in nice and snug. That's those two pieces cut out. Now it should slide in between the wheel arches and drop down, we hope, in the right position. There we go. That's it, and if I take this, have a look. That's it, scribed into that wheel arch. Tiny little bit of a gap there, but we're gonna box these in anyway. I mean, that's more than adequate for what we need. You don't really need it any tighter than that. You'd probably be covering all of that. It'll be in the garage and you're gonna have some sort of covering on the floor. So yeah, that's plenty good enough. I'm more than happy with that. So now it's just a case of extending our pencil lines, which is the center line of all our patterns. So I'm just scrawling those on the floor with a pencil mark and then we can then put our screws in and they'll fall straight into those battens. I've done the same as I did before. I put some marks up here on the wheel arch and up here on the wall and then I've run some pencil lines across the board as well. And then all we have to do now is just drill some pilot holes and then screw it all down. <laughs>
Right, so this last section in the garage portion, I'm going to use these couple of off cuts just to finish this last piece in. It will mean that I'll have a seam down the middle here, but I've got a batten there anyway. That's not a problem, and it'll be in the garage, so it's not uh, as if it's going to be on show. Probably going to be some covering over it anyway. We've used the same template that we used for the front of the wheel arch. I've flipped it over, and it matches this back profile. So we've done the same process again. I've measured into that recess. I've transferred that measurement to here. And then I've used my template to draw a pencil line around. And then that's the piece that we're going to cut out. I've done a similar kind of thing just for this little piece, this pillar in the corner here. I've got a little piece to cut out there just to get around that. Similar process of just measuring it and marking it out. And then once we've cut those two pieces out, this board will then slide into that recess. Then we can mark the centre line, cut it to length and do exactly the same for the other half. like a glove <laughs> right all we have to do now is just mark this threshold so we can cut that to length so i'll put a mark that end there and I'll also i just have to pull this out just a touch just to mark the threshold this end which is there we'll rule a line between those two cut that edge off all good to go. Oh, the other thing we need to do as well. I forgot to mark the centre line. So if we mark this board, we'll cut it square. And then the other one will fit in there as well. That's it. So that's those last couple of sections of flooring scribed into the wheel arches and screwed into the van. There's a centre joint down here, but that's really neat and tight. And once it's had the final floor finish, obviously there'll be a floor finish in the garage and uh, we're doing something nice and special up that end in the living area. So you won't see any of this plywood, it's like a subfloor. But yeah, that's going to give us a really good level base to work off. Okay, so that's the subfloor down. That took us just a, a long day just to template all of those and, and put those down. It wasn't too bad, really. It used exactly two sheets of 12mm uh, plywood, hardwood ply I used. And I managed to buy those sheets off Marketplace for £18 each. So that's £36 for the plywood. I probably used about 30 screws. I don't know, maybe a, not even a pound for the screws. And that's pretty much it for the subfloor. So there's the only offcuts left of those two eight before sheets apply. There's a couple of bits there that are sort of two, 250 mil wide and uh, 600 long. We could probably make some draw boxes out of those. So I will keep the bigger bits. These smaller bits obviously you'll get rid of, but there's minimal waste out of those two boards and done the whole floor. I just want to say a massive thanks to everybody who's taken the time to leave a comment down below on these videos. 
I can see from what you've been saying that you're really enjoying these detailed videos and enjoying watching somebody actually do some work instead of uh, you know skipping through those parts so yeah we'll continue to show you in detail what we're doing on this Fiat Ducato build so don't forget subscribe to the channel because you won't want to miss the next videos I've put a full playlist just here if you've missed any the whole of the playlist is just there check that out and I look forward to seeing you in the next video cheers